Welcome to our video on the signs that your kidneys may be starting to fail. Not cool, right? We know it is not exactly a topic that comes up every day conversation, but trust me, knowing these signs could save you a lot of trouble down the road. I'm an endocrinologist. I deal with diabetic kidney disease all the time. So let's go. First off, let's go quickly go over that uh, what kidneys actually do, right? They filter the waste and excess fluid from your blood, producing urine that eventually leaves the body. So when they start to fail, these functions start to break down. And there are a lot more functions. I just made it super simple for you. Now, what are the signs? Let's make this fun with a little game. We'll give you a few kidney clues and see if you can guess what they mean. Now, the clue number one more bathroom breaks than usual okay so this one may seem obvious but there is a reason why people with failing kidneys make frequent trips to the bathroom not every person who goes to the bathroom frequently has a kidney failure you may have a prostate problem but this is one of the signs right now when you have a kidney problem though your kidneys can no longer hold on to the excess fluid so it ends up in your bladder and you feel the need to go more often some people say well they urinate too much because they drink too much so that's a myth stop drinking this gallons of water it's not going to help your kidneys by the way i'm not saying get dehydrated just you don't have to drink excessively now, frequent urination isn't just, like I said, kidney thing, so you need to make sure your kidney function is checked. So I don't want to panic you on this, like, bathroom break situation. Like, for example, you may be having a bladder or urinary tract infection. Maybe you have uncontrolled diabetes or even certain medications like Jardium some of you are taking for diabetes or diuretics, the water pills. All these things can also increase urination. But if you notice an increase in your bathroom visits, especially at night with no other obvious reason, nothing new, no new medication or anything like that, it's a good idea to talk to your doctor and say, what's up, doc? You know, what's going on here? Can we, should we rule out kidney problems? Remember, when it comes to your health, it is better to be safe than sorry. Should we say, it is better safe than soggy. The next one is waiting game. Stage 4 kidney disease diagnosis is very common. Here's a fun fact. And by fun, we mean not so much. But most doctors don't diagnose kidney disease until patients are stage 4. Hmm, why, right? What is the deal with that? Well, it is because the symptoms of kidney disease often don't become noticeable until the condition has advanced significantly. It is kind of like that sneaky ninja in a spy movie lurking in the shadows until it is too late. So you have to be your own advocate. Now, what about the early bird catches the... You probably heard this from me before, if you're watching my all of my videos. Some of you are just watching and picking and choosing. I get that, but... If you watch every video, you will learn something every time. Early bird catches the albumin. What do I mean by that? Here's the catch. The earliest sign of kidney disease that has nothing to do with signs of it, symptoms of it, but it couldn't be a sign in the blood work or urine work, could be the appearance of albumin in the urine. So if your doctor is not checking it, ask him or her. You're probably thinking, albumin? What the hell is that? Well, let me break it down for you. Albumin is a protein that your body uses for growth and to repair tissues. Normally, kidneys keep this useful little guy in the body. So when it starts appearing in your pee, it is a sign that your kidneys might be allowing too much albumin to escape. If you notice any changes in your urine, such as foaminess, yes, that's a thing. And not every foamy urine means that you have albumin, but... It is a sign that there may be albumin in there, making a sneaky exit to your urine. So don't wait for that stage 4 to roll around, folks. If you suspect something is up with your kidneys, get checked sooner than later. As we always say, it is better to be one step ahead of time. Because the albumin may appear very early, if you do something about it, you may not progress at all. I mean, your kidney disease stage may not progress at all. Now, clue number two, let's talk about some itchy skin, right? That won't quit. Now, we know what you're thinking. What does itchy skin have to do with my kidneys? Well, if your kidneys are not able to remove the waste and excess fluid from your body effectively, it can lead to a buildup of toxins in the blood. And guess what? 
these toxins can cause itching so if you find yourself scratching more than usual and no it's not because your significant other's jokes are getting worse it might be because it may be a sign that your kidneys are not functioning as they should and you will see that in your kidney function will be declining it's called gfr in your blood work glomerular filtration rate the medical terms are always so freaking long and complicated well even for me right so number three clue for you feeling sluggish and out of it well we get it we all have those days where we feel like we are moving in slow motion but if you notice a persistent feeling of tiredness and lack of energy, it could be your kidneys trying to tell you something. When your kidneys are not functioning properly, they cannot produce enough red blood cells, hemoglobin or hematocrit, which are responsible for carrying oxygen throughout the body. And without enough oxygen, you may feel fatigued and brain fogged not a great combination this won't happen before stage three kidney disease though typically clue number four you have suddenly turned into a puffball now don't panic we're not talking about turning into a fluffy cuddly creature we are actually talking about swelling or edema in medical terms if your kidneys are not removing excess fluid properly it has to go somewhere right no, like I said, in the early stages, you have a lot of urination and then later stages, you may not urinate much and it may actually keep going down and you may end up retaining all the fluid. It depends on what stage of kidney disease you have. Unfortunately, it tends to accumulate in your legs, hands and feet and even face. Well, don't blame your kidneys. It's part of the problem with the gravity. It's, it's a law. You can't change it making you a bit puffier than usual, especially when you wake up in the morning because you are horizontal, not vertical. And hopefully you will become vertical in the morning, right? So if you notice that your rings are tighter or shoes are feeling a bit snug, it might not be because you have gained a few pounds. It could actually be your kidneys waving a red flag. And yeah, you may gain weight, but it will be a water gain. So. If you are puffing up without an obvious reason, like a bee sting, then yeah, bee sting will cause swelling. Or uh, recently, my uh, poor son got uh, attacked by a swarm of these uh, fire ants, and poor thing, he got bit like a hundred times. I was like, whoo, that was swollen. But you know, salty snacks can do that. You don't need to be bitten by the ants or other creatures. Salty snacks will do that. It is time to check in with your doctor saying that, look, I've been doing fine. I'm eating fine. I'm not getting bit. Why am I swollen, <laughs> right? Remember, it is better to debunk the mystery than to stay in the fluffy. I mean, in the dark. Don't stay in the dark. Clue number five, weight loss and poor appetite. That happens really kind of late, but we know there is a diet trend pretty much every week and you hear it. But if you're losing weight without even trying, it's not because it's your lucky day. It is potentially a kidney red flag. Unexplained weight loss well, can happen from cancer and other things too. But advanced kidney disease can do that as well. That your kidneys are having a really tough time filtering toxins, which can impact your appetite and lead to weight loss. And who wants to eat? when you're feeling nauseous from all these toxins, right? So if you have been ditching dinners and dropping pounds like they're hot without hitting the gym or going on a diet, it is time to check in with your doctor and find out the reason. And one of them could be kidney problems. Now, kidneys don't do diet, folks. Don't ignore the weight loss sign. What about the prevention plan? Keeping kidneys kicking strong before we hit the panic button let's chat about how we can actually show some love to our kidneys and keep them healthy yes there is a silver lining to our kidney tail it is a known fact that managing your blood sugar blood pressure and cholesterol levels can significantly reduce the risk of kidney disease it's not just that we'll talk about more but it's all about keeping things in balance like a well-oiled machine 
health is wealth my friend now controlling blood sugar blood pressure cholesterol these are first first things first you have to do these you have to bring them in check why well as you know the high blood sugar can make your kidneys work over time leading to damage over time remember because of the high glucose damaging your kidneys you will start even losing albumin in the urine and excessive blood sugars can happen to any diabetic and a lot of people wait until damage happens but I always tell you, you use alpha lipoic acid, benfotiamine, neuropathy support has both at sugarmds.com that a lot of you are using it but most of you are just saying uh, well I don't need prevention I'll just go to the doctor when my kidneys fail not a good approach is it you know because I talked about how alpha lipoic acid and benfotiamine can reduce the damage from high blood sugars and many people still just shrug their shoulders and say well we'll see but a diet low in sugar and high in fiber we always talk about this will help your blood sugar stay steady but it doesn't always happen right remember stay in moderation not deprivation same thing for your controlling your blood pressure don't just say oh, oh yeah 140 is just fine you know your blood pressure has to be less than 130 120 systolic less than 80 diastolic which is the second number because high blood pressure can cause real damage to your blood vessels and you're not going to feel it it's just going to happen and you know, it's just like a mold you know you're not going to see it until your wall is destroyed now regular exercise your diet low in sugar keeping the stress at bay it's going to all help and the cholesterol right people there's a lot of maniacs out there say cholesterol is good for you well, if cholesterol is good for you, why do kids have very low cholesterol? What's the problem with that? Why do my 90-year-olds have all low cholesterol? So I've never seen a 95-year-old with a horrible cholesterol still hanging around. Come on, right? The evidence is right there. You don't have to make this uh, $100 million study to find out. I mean, you see people who make it to 90s, and you see people who just succumb to death in their 60s, and you look at their cholesterol, and you, you see the difference. Why? Because especially in the setting of inflammation, high cholesterol can lead to atherosclerosis. Especially if you're a diabetic, you have a high level of inflammation. You cannot tolerate high cholesterol. So that will definitely damage your kidneys because your kidneys are full of blood vessels. If you're eating a diet rich in fruits and vegetables, uh, lean proteins, not so much though, especially if you have kidney disease, mostly plant-based diet will help maintain your cholesterol levels and will help your kidneys as well. And remember, again, benfotiamine, alpha lipoic acid, these are your allies. We're not going to, you know, just tell you, hey, diet and exercise, there's some secret weapons out there that you can, in addition to everything you're doing, use to reduce the risk of damage. And again, these are benfotiamine, alpha lipoic acid. So let's quickly touch base on that because people want repetition, people forget about it. Benfotiamine is a synthetic, but you know, comes from a natural fat soluble form of B1. So not every synthetic thing is bad for you unless things are added to it, right? So converting B1, regular B1 vitamin to a fat soluble form it doesn't happen in the nature. So then you can call it synthetic. It doesn't mean it's plastic, you know, it means it is converted in, in the lab uh, so your body can absorb it. Same thing with the dehydroberberine we have, right? So we take the berberine, we convert from berberine to dehydroberberine so your body can absorb it better without the side effects. It's still the same natural compound, it's just we are maybe cutting a piece of it so that your body can absorb it. It's not synthetic per se, but it is, let's say, modified. It is known to help prevent the progression of kidney disease with the help of these things. Again, alpha lipoic acid, for example, is an antioxidant. What does antioxidant do? It reduces the oxidative damage that happens from high blood sugar, especially in your kidneys. It neutralizes the harmful free radicals. It helps preserve kidney function. So you can find these super supplements from Sugar MD. You can trust Sugar MD. We have been doing more and more and more testing, like double, triple testing on these supplements now to make sure that there is nothing in them. There is nothing, no contamination, no heavy metals or nothing like that. So keep in mind, if something is really cheap that you're buying on Amazon, there is a reason for them to be cheap. There is either a problem with their purity because alpha lipoic acid, for example, or benfotiamine, they don't have to report the purity. When we talk to suppliers, they are like, what purity you want? Like it can be as low as 1%, it can be as high as 98%. And 
for them, for you, you don't know. They say, oh, it's Benfetium, it's Benfetium, 10 bucks, just buy it, you know, but you're getting 1%. So really, like, is that what you need? You know, don't be a fool when it comes to buying the supplements cheap because anything cheap is really not going to help you. If something has a price tag on it, most of the time there is a reason for it. Now, consult with your healthcare providers, right? Yeah, a lot of healthcare providers have no idea about the supplements, but educate them. Give them some articles, you know. There's so many PubMed articles that doctors may say, oh, it's not scientific. Well, it, it is scientific. If you just look at the published journals, that are medical journals, they're all there. You just don't know. Just because you don't know doesn't mean that it's not scientific, dude, all right? So, well, don't say to your doctor like that. He, they don't like the disrespect, but not to tell them, look, doc, I found, I found all these articles and all this scientific stuff that actually talks about it. So what's wrong with that, right? So let's keep those kidneys kicking. And remember, health is not just about living. It is about living well. Well, I hope you, everybody, live a perfect life, a healthy life until the end. And that's all we are about at SugarMD Diabetes Channel. Thank you. Have a great day. And remember to subscribe and share this video. And I will talk to you soon again. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. Uh, it, if you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.